Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper and today we're going to do another job on the boring mill and that is these over here. So what we've got here are a couple of angle plates that I built years ago to do one job and they were not perfect but they got the job done. Today we're going to set them up on the boring mill and mill them true for an upcoming job um, that is actually the repeat of the plate chiller uh, plate. We're doing the other end of it now. So let's get this up on the boring mill and figure out how we're going to mill these things. All right, well, I got it up here on the mill table and I'm not sure if we're gonna do it this way or if we're gonna lay it down and clamp and do other stuff. I'm just concerned about too much vibration up top. Um, we may just try it this way and see what happens. Uh, if it works out, great. And if it don't, well, then we'll figure out a different solution. All right, so I got her clamped down here with my mounting slots that I had in these from when I made these, but I also used my bar stock here just to give me a, a, a edge, a stop. So the mill has these grooves in the table and they have all been indicated. I've, I've verified that they are true to the spindle. Um, and then I just drop in this square stock, slide my stops, whatever I need up to it. And I indicate it again, and it's always spot on within one or two thou, not a big deal, um, especially on something like this. Now it's all clamped down. It's looking good. And really, that's not bad. I think I can live with that. We'll take light cuts and surface this face. Okay, so what we got going here is this is an eight inch face mill running a square insert. Um, this comes from uh, CME Tools. I bought this for doing the robotic welding job, the arms for the robotic welder uh, that we did um, in a video a little while back. And I've really got this thing dialed in where I like it, running about 210, 215 RPM um, and running a 45 thou rev feed rate. We're gonna run it at a 180 and slow down our feed rate to um, 29 thou a revolution, trying to get a much smoother finish and trying to reduce any chatter. So. So that first pass I took 20 and so we are not square the bottom plate to the front plate here. So I'm going to take another 25, try to get that squared up. We'll get the cutter just to break the edge here and then we'll start heading up. Alright, I'm starting to get a little vibration in our plate here. 
and if I hold on to it, it stops. But we're this plate must have been coming out because I'm taking a bigger chip now. So I think I'm going to back out and touch off at the top and come down. Try that. Okay, so this is where I stopped, and I don't know if you can see it, but she was starting to go in deeper, and I was starting to get a lot more vibration, and I backed it out about 75 thou, and when I ran it up, I hit here. So that's telling me this is out quite a bit further, so we're gonna just touch off at the top and come down and just see how the vibration does, and if that doesn't work, then we gotta go on to plan B. That'll be the easiest way to do this. Yeah, I got a lot of chatter there. Um, we're going to try a couple different things before we give up on this approach because we got a ways to go to get down to this level. Okay, so just out of curiosity, I tried increasing the spindle speed. Um, just see if we can get more inserts in it and between vibrations. It's worth a try. And I'm only taking 10,000, so... Was worse so let's slow it down let's well so far the chatter is or the vibration is a lot better I can pretty much kill it by putting my hand on it. So that might be, we'll see what this pass looks like when I get done with it. But this may be a slow, slow process to get this where we want it. I sped my feed rate up to 45 thou rev that kind of dampened things a bit but I mean that's a surface finish I can live with on this so we'll go ahead and take another God, maybe we should try taking 15 this time and see how it handles it that really cuts that vibration.
Well, I'm just gonna keep whittling away at this. Okay, so on this cut, I sped my feed rate up to 71 thou a rev, and it leaves a rougher finish, but you know what? That's really not that bad, as long as it's flat. Um, so I'm going to keep running with that, but I'm going to make a change to my setup. I'm going to throw that other angle plate up here, over here, coming this way, and then maybe try to wedge in some wood between them just to hold this a little more stable. All right, so I changed my setup around and I added a couple of machinist jacks in there. You can just see them. And what I'm gonna do instead this time is I'm gonna feed from the bottom. No, actually I'll feed from the top because I'll be putting the force this way. So I'll just keep feeding from the top down and we'll see how it does. Hopefully that'll take the vibration out of there and we'll be able to finish this up. All right, here goes nothing. So far, that's a lot better. So far, this is working really well. Um, I'm probably gonna stick with that feed rate. It's a little rough, but God, that, that's nice. I mean, it's gonna be square. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a little bit more this time. Um, I think I'm gonna take 20 thou and we'll just see how it cuts.
that second angle plate up there really made a difference with those jacks. Um, that's, that's a really a lot better finish than what I expected. Um, we may do the last, last pass with a slower feed just to smooth it out, but boy, is that nice. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna take 25 and get us down to this, and then we'll see what we need to finish it up. touched everything now I'm gonna speed up the spindle I'm gonna take five thou and we're just gonna let this thing cut um, actually I'm gonna slow down the feed rate too so we get a smoother finish came out really nice. I've just got to deburr my edges. Uh, we got a little burr there, but boy, that came out nice. So we'll get, I'll get that deburred up and then we'll flip it and do the bottom. Now I was contemplating whether or not to do that because it sits on the table one way, but let's just do it and get it over with. Then we know this thing is true and square to the world. set up basically the same way it was before. I've got the other angle plate supporting it. Um, it's clamped down to the table here, up against those stops. Everything is lined up. We're just going to go ahead. I'm going to take, I'm going to take 25 thousandths this first pass and we'll see what happens.
I was surprisingly 100% expecting this. Where it was clamped to the table is flat and there was a bump, a hump in the middle. So we'll just take, I bet you we'd get this with another 20, 25 thousandths. I'm gonna slow the spindle back down to what we were before because I had quite a bit of chatter up high um, and we'll just take that out. got it all. I bet you that our last five thousandths pass will probably get that good. So let's uh, speed the spindle back up and set our speeds, feeds, and everything and uh, take that last cut. That's a beautiful finish. That uh, cleaned up, boy, there's just a touch there I'm not even gonna worry about. But uh, that really finished up nice. I'll go ahead and get this off of here and then we'll check it for squareness, see what we got. All right, so I'm just bringing out one of my other little measuring tools. This is actually a Starrett Precision Square. Uh, it does say Starrett on it somewhere. I can't remember where, but it is. I picked this up years ago too. A friend of mine gave it to me. Um, he had it and had no use for it. Let's throw this up there and see how it looks. I'm sure this is going to be almost impossible to see. I don't see light coming through anywhere on there. God, that looks good. And, you know, realistically, when I set stuff up like this, you know, sometimes you do wind up using shims behind your angle plates to get just the right set. Um, but I think these are gonna work perfectly. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You saw a lot of cool stuff here with the big face mill. Um, another one of my gigantic measuring tools, the Starrett Square. Um, and we did a really cool job on this. Uh, had some issues with vibration, found a solution to that, worked through it, and got the job done. I just need to deburr it, and I'll switch out my setup, swap them around, set it up again, and mill the other one. So 
the next video you see these angle plates in, we'll be milling that other plate exchanger plate. Um, they brought me the other one, it was worse pitted yet. So we're gonna have to weld that up and then fix it um, and mill it. And we'll do that all on the boring mill this time so you can see the difference from last time to, the diff to this time. So with that, till next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.